Uh, we have the president of the board of directors for Native Child and Family Services, uh, May Miracle, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the Indigenous Spirit Awards. Hello, I am honored to be asked to present the Indigenous Spirit Award. As a core program of the Developing Indigenous Spirit Fund, this award recognizes children and young adults who have shown their Indigenous spirit in their efforts to break down barriers and to achieve their full potential. By way of background, and as most of us know, Indigenous children and youth are rarely recognized by mainstream awards. We are trying to change that. The Indigenous Spirit Award takes a new approach to not only recognize achievement, but the spirit required to overcome a world where things are stacked against you. We are grateful to BMO for contributing to this award. The award itself is com comprised of a $500 cash award and the sum of $2,500 to be in the form of an, an investment instrument of their choice. Some might say a cash award is a bit over the top, that perhaps a medal or something like that is more appropriate. You need to know that all the nominees are from poverty backgrounds, so receiving this award is no small thing. We had 13 eligible nominations and reading them moved us all deeply. Four will receive this award, two youth and two children. We regret not all the people nominated could be chosen we will provide a gift card to those not chosen in this round. Just so you are aware, these nominees have all experienced huge challenges in their lives. We have, however, discouraged the kind of presentation that can par parade our plight and the plight of our children and youth. This is about strength and spirit. On to the awards. In the category of 16 to 29, the first recipient is Stephanie. Stephanie is currently enrolled in the Native Youth Resource Center's Office Administration Program. She is determined to build her experience level and work towards her career goals. Stephanie has four children in her care under the age of 12, her daughter, her niece, and two nephews. Stephanie has been caring for all four children and is committed to providing all of them with a safe and happy home. As a result, this single mom has faced serious financial hardships and other issues regarding her emotional wellness that comes from her life experience and current reality. Stephanie is being presented with this award because she has worked tirelessly to overcome all obstacles and to provide a safe and happy life for her four children. She has succeeded in keeping a family together, one that likely without her would have been torn apart. In the words of her worker, we have been blown away by the resilience and commitment to her future and the future of her family. Congratulations, Stephanie. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Ross. Um, I was born and bred in Manitoba, 26 years old. I just wanna say thank you for having me here. So, December 2019 was a life-changing month for me and my daughter, Aisha Diamond, who is now four years old with family issues. I was given my sister's three children. The journey was a life learning lesson for me. I still had to achieve my goals and I knew Eventually times would get more challenging for me and the kids and I never wanted to give up on them and I never did and my goals It's been a positive few months lately I am super proud of myself and A year later I would never think that would I'd be where I am today But I never thought of giving up Actions do speak louder than words. I tell myself I am grateful for the people who helped me. I am super grateful for the people that helped me through this journey and helped me achieve my goals and helped me jump through these obstacles. I want to give a big shout out to Marilyn Stoles for waiting at, at the end of the tunnel for me. 
and I can see now I can do anything I put my heart and mind to and my soul. I am proud of myself and I know my four kids watching me are very proud of me. And I just wanted to show them whatever you put your mind and your heart to, you can do it and never give up. Sorry. Um, this award made me feel grateful and happy to continue with more education for myself. And thank you to everyone who nominated me for this Indigenous Spirit Award. I'm super grateful for everybody that was there for me. Um, I just want to say thank you for giving me this amazing opportunity. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, thank you so much. The next award recipient is Jama. Jama has been in and out of foster care for most of his life. His family background displays all multi-generational trauma and their expressions in real life. Even in foster care, he suffered with the divorce of his long-term foster parents. Jama has enrolled in, at York University studying psychology. Instead, Jama is volunteering to help others in similar life circumstances in our youth program. This giving back is part of our Indigenous ethic and it epitomizes that. His nominator says, He struck me as being this very together, self-assured young man who knew where he was coming from and had a definite plan as to where he was going. Congratulations, Jama. Hey, my name is Jama Maxi. I am one of the four recipients of the Indigenous Spirit Award. I'm Cree First Nations. My reserve is White Bear First Nations in Saskatchewan. I have ancestry that dates all the way back to the Dakota Sioux. Um, very grateful to be award winner. It's a true honor and a blessing to be uh, recognized as one of the 2020 recipients. Um, a little bit about myself. I did enter the child welfare system when I was nine months old. I spent my whole entire time in foster care and I aged out when I was 21. Uh, when I turned 21, my life uh, did not feel like it had any purpose. I was a janitor. Um, I used to scrub toilets and that was my life. And uh, I struggled with alcoholism. I struggled with having a roof over my head. Um, life didn't seem very uh, optimistic. And uh, I decided to change my life and, and turn it around. And I got sober and I decided that I was going to pursue education and I got a diploma in uh, social service work and now I'm on my way to my Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and I attend York University and uh, I'd like to uh, become a clinical psychologist one day and that is my ultimate goal and I could not have done it without the support of Native Child and Family Services. Um, I want to specifically thank Marlene Clark. Uh, thank you for all your help. Uh, since I was young, you've always helped me and it's a true blessing to have you in my life. Um, Stephanie Flowers, I'd like to thank you for your continued support. Uh, Jillian Swindle, I'd like to thank you for nominating me for this award and uh, Native Child and Family Services, all the administration staff that made this possible and uh, to the executive director for um, holding such a great organization together and over the years and it's, a, it's an honor to be a part of it. Thank you. In the category of 15 and under, the first recipient is Rory. Rory is described as an old soul who has contributed so much to the good and welfare of all those around her. Her presence at our summer camp is remarkable and known to all. During camps, Rory was always a positive peer support. She built others up, supporting everyone around her. If someone had lower self-esteem, Rory would make herself vulnerable to ensure others felt safe and secure. She does this instinctually and willingly, a positive lesson for all who observe her. She knows her, her culture and she lives it proudly. Despite some family problems, Rory remains a resilient helper in her family. She sees the world as abundant despite being raised by a single mom with the inevitable financial hardships. 
The truth is, Rory doesn't see obstacles, only opportunity. Rory is well summed up by her nominator who said as to why the nomination. Because she just shines. You can see the future when you meet her. Congratulations, Rory. Hi, my name is Rory and I'm the winner of the Indigenous Spirit Award. And winning this award is like, it's made me feel like so honored and like, like privileged to like, like just connecting with the like entire NCFST community has like been an amazing thing in my life. Like all I can really say is thank you. And I have made a list of a few people. I just want to say thank you to Jen, Sabrina, Andrea, Kevin, Marcus, Tegan, Terry, Chris, and Lily. And of course, Pat and Linda. And also, I wanted to give a really big thank you to BMO Banking. Like, this is like such a generous gift. And like, I thought I, like, this is not something I think I would ever like get. So, it, like, it's really overwhelming to think that I won. And like this, this like donation from BMO Banking has like given me such like a head start and I'm just really grateful. And um, I just really wanna say thank you and that I love you guys all. And that's like, it's just so amazing. Like it's such a privileged, like generous thing to do. Like. Anyways, I just love all of you guys, and I just wanted to say thank you again so much for this donation. The second recipient is Christian. Christian was adopted at eight months. According to his mom and others, he is the kindest person you will ever want to meet. One community parent spoke of Christian having a huge impact on a special needs child at his school. The parent spoke in gratitude that Christian always included his son during recess and made him feel part of the group. Despite the dreaded math challenges facing so many, Christian has worked hard in school and is doing well. Recently, Christian tested for, tested for and earned the prestigious ranking of Black Belt in Taekwondo at OMAC Burlington. This is a big deal for anyone, but for him, it showed his true Indigenous spirit. Christian has multiple physical disabilities requiring difficult and painful procedures, and one he has had to wear a painful cast for up to four hours a day. He never complains. According to his nominator, Christian, instead of being angry and vengeful, he has chosen kindness instead. I am nominating Christian because despite numerous barriers put in place to challenge him, he has shown continued perseverance and resilience that makes his Indigenous spirit shine bright. Congratulations, Christian. Hello, my name is Christian and I just found out that I am one of the winners of the Indigenous Spirit Award for Youth 15 and Under. Thank you so much for nominating me, Fiona, and thank you to everyone at Native Child and Family Services who chose me as the winner of, for this incredible award. Winning the Indigenous Spirit Award is a real honor as I've never won anything like this before. I was adopted as a baby through Native Child and Family Services Toronto. I've always known that I was adopted and growing up my mom taught my siblings and I about our Indigenous culture through books, movies, and by taking us to cultural gatherings like powwows at Six Nations and Native Child and Family Services. When I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with hearing loss. I started wearing hearing aids in grade two and it was a big adjustment. Wearing hearing aids always made me feel different, but helped me overcome a lot of things. After I got my hearing aids, I was able to ride my bike and it was easier for me to pay attention in school and with my martial arts training. I started Taekwondo when I was six years old and it was very hard for me. I often felt frustrated with myself because I found it hard to learn all the patterns and moves. And it was especially hard for me when I saw other kids earning their belts before me, but I really wanted to be a black belt. My mom told me to never give up and I knew I had to keep trying no matter what. I went to Taekwondo several times a week, practiced at home, and after two years of being told I wasn't ready to test for black belt, I finally made it. 
In December 2019, I earned my first black belt test at Sheridan College, and despite my fear, I was able to break six wooden boards on my first try and get my black belt. I learned many lessons on my journey to black belt excellence, like practice makes perfect and I can achieve anything if I work hard enough and focus. My mom and grandparents have always been there for me and have always encouraged me to try my best and work hard. My education is really important to me, and while I'm not sure what career I want to pursue, I really love computers and technology, and I plan to open an RESP with the $2,500, and the rest I'll put towards a new iPhone. I'd also like to say thank you to everyone at Native Child and Family Services Toronto for always being there for me and my family over the years and always helping us. I promise to keep working hard, and I will never let any disability or obstacles stop me from achieving my dreams and goals. Thank you for listening.